Hello everyone, it's Lars here from Unicorn Reviews. Now, before I start going into the review of the Fantex Ento Evolve ITX, uh, if at any point in the video you feel like liking this video, uh, press the like button. Uh, you can also leave a comment, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, I'll link that right there. Um, you can also support me on Patreon so that I can, you know, get better gear. Uh, I mean, filmic quality is already pretty okay, but better is always better, right? Anyway. Um, the Ento Evolve, They're, it's made by Fantex. What that pretty much means is that build quality is going to be amazing. It's going to be very, very modular. Now, um, this is the smaller version of the original Ento Evolve. Now, the thing with the original Ento was it was an MATX, the size of an ITX, uh, of an ATX tower. Uh, it was also fairly expensive at 120. Um, this one is ITX at micro ATX size, but it's very, very, you know, cost effective. It's only 70 euros for the windowed version we have here. Now, with that, you do lose the full aluminium exterior. It's now steel and some plastic um, with actually a tiny little bit of a color mismatch with where the plastic is just a little bit lighter, like plastic always is really. Um, but let's first get into the review. I already build a system in here. Normally I do unboxings and everything. I have the box right here. The box is good. Uh, it uses hard foam for packaging. In fact, packaging is okay for a case this, you know, this size, this light. Um, so let's go around the exterior first. As you can see, we have a rather big window here. It is very, very well tinted, so it's quite dark, the window. Uh, and then the front has the typical look where it just has air intakes on either side. And at the bottom, uh, we have a LED light right here. Um, with the normal Ento Evolve, you can change LED color. You can't with this one. Uh, it's just a white light. Uh, power button is on top. Um, we have two USB 3s, an audio jack and a microphone jack, as well as a little reset button with a hard drive activity light in there as well. Now let's start with taking the front off. Um, it just comes off like so. You just pull it from underneath. Uh, it's very, very heavy. And as you can see, um, it has these vents here so airflow really isn't a problem with this one um, this is steel it's very very you know strong sturdy pretty much any everything you'd like and then behind that you get a giant dust cover now the stock fan if i can find it this is the stock fan now this is a 200 millimeter fan um, it produces about 25 decibels of noise they say on the box uh, it's a very good fan but I decided to swap the fans over to Be Quiet fans, so I'll just pull the dust filter off. As you can see, it's a fairly good, fairly, very strong dust filter. It also uh, clicks on, very cool, cool stuff. Uh, I went with dual 140s. Uh, you can go with a, a 280 millimeter radiator, 240 millimeter radiator, anything smaller than that as well, which is very, very cool. Um, most of the case, as I I think I already said it's held together with screws, um, not rivets where most cases, especially in this price range, use rivets only. Now, unlike with previous Entos, there are st some rivets with this case. And what that means is when I was building it, um, I had to, I couldn't completely disassemble every single panel, which for most people is okay. But the annoying thing with these fans is that they don't use the typical screw through um, things. You have to screw them in from the back always. They don't come with the usual uh, fan mount. So I had to actually drill out the holes that were already there. Um, and that involved taking all the screws out. Um, I'll link right here, somewhere about right there. Uh, I'll link a, a time-lapse build lock with me drilling into a brand new case really. But looks are great. Build quality is great as well. So I'll just show you this side. Um, Fantex doesn't use those um, self-retaining screws. Instead, they have normal thumb screws with a rubber ring around it to prevent scratches or uh, paint going missing from you know constantly doing it and undoing it. It's a, a very cool system, but I wish it was yeah self-retaining. Anyway, the window, as you can see, fairly reflective. Um, it's also it has a nice tint, a bit greenish. Now that I look at it from this side, um, but it's sturdy. That's pretty much all you need, especially given the price point. I cannot stress this enough. Um, in the past, I made the error sometimes of reviewing a case without keeping price into account. I am taking price into account right now. Um, and so value for money, I still don't have anything to complain about. 
Anyway, as you can see, big CPU coolers fit, any air cooler will fit, depending on your motherboard and your graphics card. Um, the graphics card, of course, any size will fit, uh, any length, well, any width will also fit, so you don't really have to worry about the size of your components. It is ITX only, so keep that in mind, guys. Now, Fantex has this really weird thing here, as you might see. Um, so there are two thumb screws here, and basically it's like an, an L bracket that covers the GPU portion, well, where the power goes in, the power connectors. Uh, it's very weird. On top of that, you do have a drop and lock for SSDs or hard drives, but the hard drive thingy you have to buy separately. And this thing just flips open, and that's where your power connector is for your, you know, for your graphics card. Um, what I ended up doing was zip tying uh, one of the heat pipes to the thing because there is quite a bit of sag on the uh, on the graphics card because it is a very low budget case. There is some flex to it. It doesn't feel cheap or anything, but there is some flex to it there. Um, then let's talk about um, cable management now. Oh no, there's something even more important. Uh, that I can't actually show, I'll have to do that in B-roll. Um, but the entire top slides out so you can easily fit fans on the top that way. Which is really, really cool. Anyway, um, as you can see we also have our power supply here. Everything's covered except for this area so you can still kind of show off what power supply you have. Um, we have a giant rubber grommeted hole here, an even bigger one here for your 24 pin. And there's also one behind the, uh, the graphics card cover thingy. So that's all, you know, that's all great. I think it looks fairly clean inside, especially because there are three drives in this system. Um, and my power supply isn't very good at it. I don't really have the most flexible cables. So I think anyone can make a case, uh, a build in this case look very, very cool. So let's move to the other side. Now the doors, as you may have seen before, they slide and then you just pull them off. They don't have the cool hinge system or the just... I would actually have preferred it if they just popped on like the front panel does because I really like that system. I know some people kind of hate it a lot. I kind of like it. Um, as you can see on the back, we have a lot of room in the bottom. So in the bottom here we have two hard drives or room for two hard drives and a drop and lock uh, bracket for your SSD. So just you just put it in, lock it, drop it in and lock it in. Really, it's, that's I guess in the name. Yeah. Anyway, uh, cable management, all right. I would have preferred to see a few more of these, you know, zip tie hooks. Um, you do get these two Velcro straps. Uh, Fantex makes these. Fractal now has them in the R5. Everyone should do this with cases. It's so easy, especially because with zip ties, everything gets rounded. Um, with Velcro straps, you can just flatten everything. Really, really handy. Um, but I think cable management, even you know, despite missing a few of those zip tie hooks, actually you don't get any at all. Um, it was pretty all right to do it. Uh, I got a way overkill fan splitter, so I can put a lot of fans on there. Um, now it does, as I said, only come with one fan, the 200 millimeter front fan. Um, there is no Molex connector; it's just a three pin, not the PWM. Um, they don't really come with a way to attach it. I kind of would, would have liked, like with Fractal, just a three-way fan controller on the back, for example. That would have been really, really great. But then the front fan doesn't make any noise anyway, so why change it, right? Anyway, let's move over to the back of the case now. Um, as you can see, no fan here in the back. I usually have fans in the back, uh, but there isn't enough room. So with the D14 that I have in here, uh, not enough room to put a third fan on there. Again, two Be Quiet fans on the D14 is gonna keep your PC cool, but yeah, maybe they should have, you know, extruded it a little bit to make that possible. Because it, it did work with my Prodigy and with the, the Note 804 I had before this. But that's a very, very minor complaint, really. Now, in the top, I already showed how the fans slide in and out. Um, there is plenty of clearance for radiators, also because it's offset, obviously. But the top is also held in with, I guess, about 10 screws. And you can take it all the way off, uh, as you can see in the, the build lock. Um, so that's all very, very easy, especially with these ITX boards. If you go with giant coolers on them, it's very easy to install it that way. Um, I wish every case was this disassemblable. 
if that's even a word. But moving around the back, you can see two ex expansion slots. If you can fit a fan on here or radiator, you can go with 120s or 140s and they are on rail, so you can go up or down or whatever direction you want as long as it's not sideways. There's only one direction, I guess. Uh, anyway, get the normal IO shield. There's nothing fancy going in going on around here. There are no uh, water cooling, external water cooling grommets. I really like that because what if people were to actually use that? That would look really, really stupid. Um, power supply can go either way, but there, the dust filter of course only works if you have it fanned down. Um, again, really cool dust filter. Goes in and out very, very easily. Now, another reason other than the fan filter, uh, well, the power supply fan filter, um, to put the power supply fan down is because, as you can see, and you can probably see this, there's less than a unicorn pinky um, between the graphics card and the bottom. Now, this bottom is vented. There is some room between the power supply and this little plate. And because it's vented, and the, the, front, the front fans, the bottom one, can actually blow air all the way to the back of the case underneath um, this divider. Cooling is not a problem, but you really don't want a power supply and a graphics card fighting for air. Um, that would be very bad, I think, with this case. Um, but you're probably interested in how hot it's running. This is a Strix GTX 970, I think. Yeah, this is the 970. Um, I, I thought for a moment I had the, the 290 in there. But it runs at 76 degrees uh, with 58%, yeah, 58% fan speed. So it's very, very quiet this case. I really liked it. I thought it was going to be a bit, you know, louder because everything does look a bit cramped in there. But it does look pretty good. I mean, I like the look of this system. It's a bit, maybe a bit messy, the cables here, but it's good enough, I think. Um, so let's move on to the final part, the bottom. And I really don't want to scratch the panels here. But you do get two feet um, with rubber. As you can, as you saw before, it's not actually rubber. It's more a foamy rubber. It, it slides around stuff, well, on top of stuff very easily. So that's all cool. Um, we get, again, sliders here because if you take the power supply cover thingy off, or if you don't, um, you can put pumps or reservoirs in there. Um, of course, pumps can also go on the power supply cover thing. Reservoirs can go there, and then you can put massive radiators in the top here or in the front, um, depending on what sort of stuff you like. Um, you probably can't go with top and front because there isn't a lot of room there if you go with really, really thick ones. Uh, and also, because of the length of the thing, push-pull and a long graphics card and a very thick radiator may not work. Um, but there is enough room for basic stuff and this is an ITX system with a single CPU and a single GPU so you're not going to need a massive amount of cooling anyway. So I guess with all that sort of stuff it's time for a conclusion. Um, so I forgot to give awards in my last couple of videos, I'm not going to do that now. This thing gets a gold award. Um, I was thinking about giving it platinum but there are a few things. So for example, the fact that there are some rivets in some areas, which means that you can't take the front panel off completely, which kind of annoyed me when I had to drill in it, drill it to fit these particular fans. That's a bit annoying. Um, this separation here is also held in with them, but that's about the only negative I can think of. And because the case itself is only 65 euros for the non-windowed panel, 70 for the windowed version, um, I really cannot complain about something like that. So a gold award it is. Um, I'd like to see Fantex make a smaller, smaller alternative to the original Enzo Evolve, not just more budget-friendly alternative, which, which this really is. I mean, with the the Ento, the Ento Pro I uh, reviewed, I said if you're looking for a case under 140 euros, buy this one. I'd say if you're looking for a case under 90 euros buy this one, it's brilliant. And if you're looking for an ITX case and you like the styling, definitely buy this one. All right then, so I know I said it before, but like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. <laughs> Leave a comment to let me know what you think. Um, is the style of video good? Do I need to script more? Feedback is always welcome. Uh, you can subscribe um, to follow up what I do. Um, you can follow me on Twitter for more frequent updates really. Um, and also support me on Patreon for better cameras, better lenses, better audio, better light because 
if you follow me on Twitter, you saw what kind of lights I'm filming this with and it's not really optimal. Anyway, thank you all very, very much for watching.